What we're gonna do today is we're gonna take off this SLS valve and put new O-rings in it. So we're working on our 1985 300TD OM617 turbo diesel. And the SLS suspension is uh, drooping and will not, you know, rise up. So pump's working. Uh, so I feel like we've got a leaky valve here. So we're gonna remove it and we're gonna replace the O-rings inside. If I recall, I think there's five O-rings uh, that can go bad. And when it does, it bypasses internally uh, causing fluid not to go to the struts, but to just return back to the tank. So I think that's what we've got going on here. So, tools you will need. You're gonna need a set of line wrenches. Now I've got a Harbor Freight set that um, has served me well, but it does not have 11 millimeter. And this right, these two lines here are 11 millimeter. And most of the brake fittings on these cars are 11 millimeter. So I've got me a gear wrench 11 millimeter that I bought a couple years ago just for my 300D. So that fits there. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter. Now my Harbor Freight set does have a 12 millimeter. That's gonna go here. You're gonna need a eight millimeter Allen that's for right here. Now, to get the valve off the car, which is what we're gonna do first, you don't need to remove the eight millimeter. You're gonna need seven to 17 millimeter wrench or socket, either one with a backup. So the 17 millimeter on each end, those two are what holds the bracket or the valve onto the bracket and then the two eight millimeter Allens with 17 millimeter heads or nuts are what holds the valve together. So undo these first, get the valve off. And then once we have it on a workbench, we're gonna take the eight millimeter uh, Allens off. Now I've marked my valve, the little shaft here, where this is, I'm gonna take the lever off right here. You could take it off right here, but I'm gonna undo it right here um, just because. So I've marked it, so I can put it back exactly where it came. So I'm gonna start off by undoing all the lines and that's gonna make, you know, you wanna do that while it's still attached to a bracket. And once the lines are off, I'll undo uh, these two and then I'll undo this and get a screwdriver in here and pry this off. It's just a pinch It's a pinch bolt right here. So just take it off. You may have to get something in here like a screwdriver and wedge it open just a little bit and then you can pull it off. That seems like the easiest place to remove it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll set up time lapse. Uh, there's not much room under here so I'll get you the best view you can do or best view I can get you and we'll go ahead and pull this thing off
right, valve is out. And one of those lines put up a heck of a fight. Now, you got this, the bracket that this thing is attached to is very flimsy, so be very careful. When I was trying to do it, it, it bent a couple times, I had to bend it back. But just be very careful. Uh, and then the two bolts that hold the valve itself are super tight. Ended up using my, uh, because it was trying to tweak the bracket when I was trying to do it by hand, ended up using my little 3 8 impact with a 17 millimeter wiggle uh, socket and it got it out. Um, it took a lot of beating and it finally got it out. So yay for that. But I feel bad for any of you uh, Northern guys who've got a rusty car because this is gonna be a nightmare uh, getting all that stuff loose. Definitely use heat. I had to use propane or a, a well, it's not pro, a map gas uh, torch to heat up one brake line because or one hydraulic line because it just did not want to come off. And you know, I was trying to hold it and the I ended up having to take the uh, fitting off the bottom one to be able to hold the fitting on the top one because the fitting was starting to turn and it was just a mess. So put some heat on it and finally got it to break loose and you know, saved it from rounding. It was, it was starting to want to round off, but it didn't and we got it out. So if they're one not wanting to come out and get some heat on them and, and uh, hopefully they'll come out. I tried a little butane torch first and of course that didn't put enough heat on it, but map gas got it and we got them out. So, now for the, the uh, rebuild. I wanted to, just for reference sake, uh, I went ahead and marked the housing. I don't think it matters. The housing looks the same. The back housing looks the same all the way around. I wanted to make sure it was the same so I marked it it's going to go back together the same now uh, let's keep in mind that this notch in the shaft now you know I marked my lever I wouldn't have had to mark it because there's a notch in it for the bolt so it can only really go one way but I marked it let's remember that the 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 notch in the lever arm or the lever shaft goes up towards the bleeder let's just remember that and then this piece because you could actually flip this around backwards this piece is going towards or opposite of the inputs or outputs I don't know which is which but it's going opposite of that so let's remember that because um, that will help us when we put it back together. Now, we might be able to see some wear marks. Probably can on this thing. Uh, I'm going to hit it with some brake cleaner. Once I get this thing all cleaned up, I'll probably take it inside and rebuild it. Um, I cleaned the outside real well. But let's just hit that with some brake clean. And we'll hit the inside and all the ports all right so we should probably be able to tell a wear mark on this arm actually we can't we can't really tell it's not worn so we'll just remember with the shaft up it covers this hole. Um, I'm going to clean this shaft up a little more so that we can, uh, you know, fully disassemble this thing. I'm not going to, I'm spraying brake cleaner and all that. And I didn't show before. I just don't want to get brake cleaner on a camera lens is not good. So no need to show that. I'll clean it up a little bit more and then I'm going to take this thing inside and we're actually going to rebuild it inside once it's clean. All right. Get yourself a clean work area. 
already got that part apart, cleaned it. You're going to need some little picks and stuff to get these O-rings out. The first step we're going to do is we're going to pull this out right here. Now this is a this is springy. Uh, I've got a pair of needle nose pliers uh, wrapped up so that they don't mark. If I can get them on there. and pulled it out just like that and they're wrapped up like I said several wraps of electrical tape so we don't leave any marks on it got a little check ball right there don't lose sight of that with a little spring so when you assemble this back make sure you put it back like that I would recommend setting it like that and then putting it together of course you got another check ball too goes down in there on the other side of it so just make sure you get all those back like they go but that allows us to get to I actually do have an exploded view of this let me grab it here you have what this thing looks like. Now I got this over at Peach Parts, it's actually right up on this, but we have a um, check valve here and we have a check ball there, uh, this, and then we have a uh, high pressure release, relief valve there. Uh, so that goes in like that and the ball which is 3F just a check ball is just gonna fall down in there so symbol make sure you don't leave that ball out it's right there and make sure it stays in that so when you assemble assemble like this but also try to do it like that or um, so you don't lose the ball that's in this piece that goes in here like that see and that ball sticks out so, you've got an O-ring here, you've got an O-ring down in here, so you're going to have to pick those out. I'll put, a, I'll put all the O-ring sizes in the description. So that's one and two, and then you're going to have three and four in here. So we need to pull this shaft out, and keep in mind, notch goes towards the bleeder, at least in my case and there's our three and four um, they may number them well they don't even number them they don't even have them on the list here but uh, we're going to have to pick those two out get this one off pick that one out and then we've got our number five right there so I'm going to set up some time lapse uh, as I pick through these well tell you what I'll leave, we'll, we'll leave this real time, but I'm just going to speed it up.
So when you're putting these in, um, try to use a blunt instrument. I just happen to have uh, Allen wrench here that I was able to actually push those in. These are extremely difficult to get in. They're uh, pretty thick O-rings and you know you got to get them into that groove. So just start them in the groove and then if you can use like a rounded, I use this rounded surface to kind of hold it into the groove as I used a blunt instrument to push going around and try to get it in the groove. Uh, the last little bit will be kind of hard to push in but you normally can get them in. Lube the O-rings up before you start. Um, help keep them from getting cut and just help them slide in a little better. Um, sorry if my hands were in the way, you know, I just I tried to do the best I could to show but I'm sure my hands blocking all of it. So let's get these in. Maybe I can show you a little better on this one. This one will be a little easier. So just start it into the groove. And then, like I said, use a use something to get it into the groove and kind of hold it into the groove like that. And then I'm going to try to push. So that's in the groove. I'm going to use a blunt instrument. This one's a little harder because it it's less to hold. Um, but that's going in and it's going into the groove. You can see. Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. It's going in. And like I said, just using a blunt instrument, don't use anything sharp. And it looks like it pushed down a little bit. We're going to come down from the bottom and try to push the last little bit in. And it's in. Much easier. Okay. That one's in. And then this one's easy. We just stretch it around. Boom. Done. So reassemble. I'm using this little, it's just a lightweight oil, just so nothing's dry, because I hit this thing with brake cleaner. I don't want, you know, this thing's made to have oil in it. So, we've got our check ball in there. Like I said, don't, don't leave that out. Um, now, we're going to put this at a slight angle. Well, actually, first we're going to put it inside of here okay and then at a slight angle we're gonna put this back together and we've got this o-ring here so real quick we're gonna add a little bit of lube inside of here I already put a little bit, but I just want to make sure I've got some. And then... O-rings tight. Let's do this. Let me make it a little easier. Yeah. Tape is folding over. We're gonna turn it. Help the O-ring go in. And it's in. And our check valve, check valve, check ball. We can hear it rattling around in there. It's good. <clears throat> okay. So, 
we are on the reassembly. We check, and we've got the notch going up, and we said our valve, our thing here went like that. It does not go this way. We can actually see a little witness mark where it did, where it was hitting that. Goes like this, everything's cleaned up. Now it's not going to slide on all the way. Uh, as we assemble this thing, it's going to get pinched and push this in. And the way this thing works is it's going to rotate around this valve. Yes, that makes sense. And as it's down, that will actually cover, well, you can't really push it in, that'll pretty much cover that valve. So, anyway, um, but this thing will rotate around depending on, and it'll fill, and, or send to the struts and take fluid away from the struts depending on where the position is. So one last o-ring, this one will be easy. Get our little it's a tiny little screwdriver, use it as a pick. Got that out. I'm gonna take a rag here. Actually use a little bit of oil in there as kind of a something to help clean it. This thing's been, like I said, it's been cleaned with brake clean. Alright, so it's all cleaned up. Got a new o-ring here. the o-rings dry. And like I said, this is just a really lightweight oil. There we go. And our little scratches we put on the valve. Line those back up. Just like that. And it will get assembled. Put our two bolts in, our opposing bolts, which went in these two holes. So I'll put those in and we're going to tighten them down alternating to draw it straight in. So I'm going to go do that. I'll probably just set up time lapse for that. No need to watch me do that. So that's it. That is the rebuild. Now, you know, if, if you're, if you had lots of wear in here, these surfaces still look really good. If you had lots of wear or scarring in here, um, you're probably going to have to replace this. But if it's just leaking internally, chances are, you know, you can put new O-rings in it and it'll work just fine when you reassemble it. valve is rebuilt and we're ready to put it back on. I'm not going to video putting it back on, but I will give you some, well, I'll set up a time lapse for it, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just start the bolts and leave them loose until we get all of the hydraulic lines started. Uh, of course, we're not going to torque any of them down until it's tight you know, until it's bolted up tight. But we want to be able to kind of wiggle it around and I may even just not bolt it in at all till they're started. 
but don't bolt the thing on and then try to get the hydraulic lines on because you'll probably end up cross threading one it's much easier if you can wiggle it around and kind of get it lined up because the lines don't always want to line up perfectly sometimes you gotta you know tweak them around a little bit and it's a lot easier to move the valve around and then trying to bend a line a metal line so i'm gonna get all those started and then we'll we'll bolt it up and we'll hook our lever back up and then we can test this thing out Make sure you start that bolt before you put those top two lines in. You know, at least start it in the housing. But yeah, it definitely worked out best leaving the lever loose to start all the lines. It'd be difficult having that thing bolted in and starting them. All right, I think it's ready to take for a drive. I measured it on the ramps and it was at 29 inches and I started it up and it's like at 29 and a half so it raised itself up about half an inch and it also feels a little bit stiffer it was very floaty before you know it's, it's definitely got a stiffer feel to it it still gives you know it's not a harsh feeling so right now I think the accumulators may be good uh, we'll check them at some point I'm sure but for now, it seems like we've made an improvement that the, you know, it, before, I mean, it was, it was so, <laughs> I mean, you could, you could really bounce it. It was so soft. So I think that'll give us a lot better ride quality. It won't be so floaty. It's up a little bit higher, so it's not sagging. Uh, I'll have to let it off the ramps and get a final feel for it, but I was just letting it run a little bit just to check for leaks so I can get up under it. So I think that's it. Definitely leave that valve loose when you tighten those lines down and be very careful because those top two ones do thread into aluminum. It, it's very easy to cross thread. So make sure you do not cross thread those. They should go in super easy it and be tight you know starting off so yeah just be really careful with those you cross thread them you're buying a new house thanks for watching leave a comment down below hit the like button and subscribe for more